and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hi, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. My name's Jen Liddy. And this week, it's the first week of February. And if you live in the Northeast, you're probably cold. Here where I live in Syracuse, New York, February is a dark month and preparations for New Year's Eve feel like a year ago already. And the shininess of our resolutions has pretty much worn off. In February, especially in Syracuse where I live, people are sick of the weather and they're also sick of themselves. That's why it's usually the busiest month in my practice. I meet lots of people ready to make changes in their lives and so they connect with me to see if I'm a good fit to help them get where they want to go. For me personally, February is a tough month. I work hard to manage my mindset to stay in a high energy and a high vibration. It takes a lot of work because it's so much easier for me to isolate myself, stay in my robe by the fire, and watch basically all 10 seasons of Friends in three days. I know from experience that too much of this is really bad for me. Behavior like that causes a real lack of connection. And I mean connection to myself, to others, and to my purpose. And when I lack connection, I'm at my lowest, saddest, and most empty. And the reason I'm talking about this this month is that it's not just me. I know from talking to many other people that this is a hard month for people. It's a month where people really want to stay isolated. And when I'm isolated from my husband, my son, my best friend, or even my colleagues, I get in a heavy, low, and unproductive space. So I want to talk about this idea of a lack of connection this month so that I can help you maybe move through February with a little more ease and a little more purpose. And I'll share some tools throughout the month to do so. Now, I've realized that it's loneliness. That's the word for it. And what loneliness does to me is it causes me to buffer. And that means waste time, overeat, underperform, and generally feel listless. Remember that buffering is just like a squashing down of a feeling you don't want to experience like you're trying to avoid something. And so that's why all month I'm going to talk about this idea of isolation versus connection because isolation and buffering keeps us from our goals and we need to be aware of how it affects us. So I'm not talking here about being an extrovert when you're a true inf- introvert and and that you need to connect with people and you need to go out in the world and be a big introvert, a big extrovert if you're an introvert. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being true to connecting to people and yourself in a way that's meaningful, purposeful, and useful to you. When we're isolated and lonely, we waste time. We berate ourselves and we yearn for something different, but we often don't know what that is or even how to get it. And in my most isolated moments, I am the queen of wasting time. So here's a great example. In my most isolated, lonely moments, I tell myself that what I really want, that what I'm craving is a full day to do nothing. In central New York, upstate New York where I live, it's really easy to do nothing, especially if you don't have someone dragging your ass out of the house. Now, I am not a skier, and I know that a lot of people who live in cold climates will say to me, oh, you have to get out and you have to go skiing. That is not my jam. I don't like to be cold, and I'm not much for adventure. So this being alone thing, I have to figure it out because this is my reality. I live in a place that's very cold, and... Being alone for an entire day 
is ironically the opposite of what I need, even though my brain is telling me, no, 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 just stay by the robe, stay by the fire. So every weekend, my son and my husband leave for the mountain to go skiing. And they leave at like eight o'clock in the morning and they ski all day. My son is on the race team and they're all very involved and it's great for them. But at this time last year, what I would do is I would wish them a great day and I would stay in my robe by the fire and then just be alone. I might binge watch something or putter around the house, but most likely I would just overwork. And whether I'm watching TV or doing laundry or some other kind of domestic servitude, I'm all alone. And it sounds kind of amazing, right? Like a lot of women I know would be like, lady, what is your problem? These guys are gone for the whole day and you're complaining? Well, I know that it sounds amazing, but if I'm being honest, a full day of doing nothing depletes my energy. I need a little of being alone, but I also need to do some connecting to fill me up. So by the end of winter last year, I was feeling pretty bad about things. I was so incredibly lonely, but I didn't even realize that I was lonely. And when I'm lonely, I'm unproductive and I waste a lot of time. I spend a lot of time on social media or I overeat or over shop. Those are the ways I hide from my loneliness. What about you? What do you do when you're feeling lonely? You might be wondering, well, how is it possible to be married and be a mother and a friend and a coach and be active in your relationships and still feel lonely? Maybe you've experienced this so you know how absolutely possible that exact scenario is. We can be surrounded by people and responsibility and still feel lonely. Loneliness comes from a lack of connection. It comes from isolation And for me, one of the easiest places to feel isolated is in regard to my business. As a solopreneur, I'm often isolated. I work long hours alone in my home office without seeing another soul. Now, don't get me wrong. This is my dream. I don't want to go back to a classroom. I don't want to be surrounded by students and colleagues, and I don't want to work in a busy, noisy office. This is exactly what I picked. And sometimes what we pick for ourselves can be challenging. Like the fact that I pick not to go skiing. I choose to make that choice. But ultimately, being alone is problematic for me because I'm an extrovert, which means I get energy from being around others. And if I'm alone too long, I become lethargic and inert. And lethargic and inert people do not achieve their goals. That's why I'm talking about this this month. When we stay isolated, we stay away from our goals. But the other problem with isolation, and this is a problem whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, is that isolation creates doubt. It breeds doubt. And here's what I mean. When I'm working alone day after day in a silo, I don't have any colleagues to bounce ideas off of. That's when I start to doubt myself. I think, is this a crappy idea? Is any of this going to work? And because our brains like to keep us safe and efficient, that's our brain's job. Mine says, of course, this is a crappy idea. Don't take that risk. Are you insane for even thinking about this? Go back to what you were doing before. That's good enough. And I stay small. Now, here's another true story about how isolation causes doubt. Inevitably, every winter, because I choose not to ski, I don't get to see my best friend as much. She's busy getting her kiddos wherever they need to be during the week after school. And on the weekends, she loves to ski. In fact, she and my husband, their fam- like our family ski together and I'm not there. So being isolated from her creates doubt in my head. Are we still friends? Does she still love me? Would she rather be with a different best friend who shares her love of skiing and adventure? I know I sound like a middle schooler, right? (laughs) I mean, like I'm not the only adult who struggles with the doubt that being isolated brings. And that's why I want to bring voice to this. These are real thoughts that isolation causes us to have. You might feel isolated at work, surrounded by people, but isolated. You might even feel isolated in your marriage. You might feel disconnected from a teenager in your life who isn't letting you in right now. Everyone, whether you are an extrovert or an introvert or an ambivert, whether you're shy, outgoing, great at communication or terrible at it, feels isolation at some point. 
So if all this is normal, what's the problem? Well, let me unpack it for you. Isolation causes doubt, and doubt is a killer of self-esteem, obviously. And then isolation not only kills our self-esteem and our self-worth, but it also kills our creativity. Have you ever worked on a project or something, whatever it is, alone for a really long time? And maybe you feel like in the flow about it. You love working alone on it. You're chugging along. And then it's time to know if it will fly in the real world. Can I sell it? Do people want it? I mean, I can only work alone for so long before I need to say it out loud to another human being. I need to share it and get some feedback so I can make it better and see if it's really worthwhile. Because without feedback, I'm not as creative as I need to be. I can't see possibilities or consider others' examples. I can only take myself so far in the silo. When we don't believe in ourselves or we feel stuck in our creativity, we stay stuck. And inert people do not achieve their goals. And you have goals. You're trying to make the world a better place. But first, you have to make your world a better place. If you're ready to achieve your goals, be careful this month to notice your thoughts, your feelings, and actions around this idea of isolation. Are you asking for help? Are you getting the support you need? Are you connecting with the others who can help move you into a higher vibration with thoughts that serve you? You don't have to do it alone, but you do need to take action. Don't tell yourself the story that there's no one out there to help you because that's bullshit. There are real people all around you. Look up and ask yourself, who can I connect with? It might be uncomfortable, but look at this. You're already in discomfort. You're already living in the isolation and that's the worst case scenario. Take a step today to connect. Maybe it's with a Facebook group of like-minded people. Maybe it's with other humans in real life in your community or your family. Or maybe it's even reaching out to me to just say hello. I've been there. I understand what this feels like. Don't let your goals sit inert this month because loneliness and isolation are winning. Take back control. And this month, tune in each week to this podcast as I share more and more tools to help move you into action. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app. Or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.